going live in every way that we possibly can. So our all of our offices are now broadcast studios. Christy, I'm sure you've experienced that as well, the change. I love it. It's you so love it? I love it. I love are it. you like, are you a homebody, Christy? I am. I love you it. Are. sanctuary. I've, been, I've built my business to be online. I don't want to be outline. I, I want to be online. I love it. I've got small kids at our home. They're not small yes. anymore. They're nine and 10, but I've built my business. So I've always had an online business. So I'm just like, this is just every, my husband works at home with me. You know, only difference is that the kids are now doing recess in the front yard instead of at school somewhere. So <laughs> Have you come up with any, have you come up with any, um, like family games or family traditions since this whole thing has happened? We, uh, many. Yeah. But one of our favorite things is we love to watch movies together. And so Mm -hmm. we'll just, we'll just get as close as we can on the couch. And it's like almost sometimes I can't even breathe because I've got a face here and a face here. And, and I'm like, I love this, but can you move over a little bit? So we're just all piled on the couch together. And, and now the kids are like, what movie do we watch tonight? And I'm taking That's them sweet. through my kind of movies. Like, so they've seen like The Breakfast Club and 16 Candles and War Games and, you know, all the movies from when I was a kid. And Oh, and I love it. God, it's been fun. There's something about, um, and before we officially, st- we're going to start officially in a minute, but there, is there something about with kids right now to just a ton of touch, like a ton of physical touch. It brings so much comfort. I find that that's instead of talking about our feelings sometimes, with our eight-year-old, it's just better to snuggle in. And it's hard to always. talk about it all the time. Yeah, always. They're, they're just cuddly, you know, because my mm-hmm. husband are very affectionate. And so they just kind of grew up with a lot of affection. And it's it, I'm grateful that I have them. And it's this period of time where they are so cuddly and they want to be on top of me. And, and it's Yes. Like, yeah. It Soaking does. it in. I am. I I'm love lucky. that. I'm just, I'm appreciating the fact that I'm getting more time with them now than I would have, you know, had this not happened. So I'm I'm looking for the positives in all of it. So, yes. And that's, and we're going to talk so much about that too. Uh, Just that idea of the way that we think and the words that we use are going to create our reality. So I love that that's even true with your kids. What's the story around having your kids at home? Um, I want to let you know, we've got people from all over the country. We got Florida, we've got North Carolina, we've got, I think I saw Texas in here, Kentucky. Oh, this is awesome. Sam <laughs> is, um, Samantha Abenzino, you'll see her name uh, near mine and Christie's. She's going to help run the chat. So all night, well, not all night for like 45 minutes. <laughs> We're not going to be here all night, but for the next 45 <laughs> minutes, long for 45 minutes. <laughs> Christy, you're with me forever. Thank you so much. Um, but Samantha is going to be watching the chat. So this is your chance. Christy Whitman is a baller. Let me tell you a little bit about her. First of all, thank you for coming to the porch. We have the Christy Whitman on Google her name. You're going to find everything you could about her. You'll find a ton of awesome information, a ton of awesome video clips, but she really is at the end of the day, she is such a bright light in our industry for coaches. And I'm so glad that she's here with us today. She's the author and New York Times bestselling author, actually, not just an author, but she wrote uh, Quantum Success, check that out, and The Art of Having It All. She's a coach to celebrities. She's here with us tonight. She understands the power of influence, and I'm so glad that she's taking this time with us. Christy, thank you. This is such an energetic boost for me and for all of us who get to be here with you. Thank you for your kind words. I am, I'm already boosted. So Lindsay, it's a pleasure seriously to be with you and I'm, I'm grateful for what you're doing. So thank you for what you're doing, especially right now for everybody. So yeah. Yeah. And speaking of right now, I know the one thing that you said that has been kind of nibbling away at me this last week is this idea that everything is amplified Uh, right now in this moment, good, bad, indifferent, not even using good and bad judgment, but just whatever was in your life before has now been amplified. What do you think about that? You're the one that put that bug in my ears. So can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah. So I, I channel the council and that's been something that when this thing happened, I was like, okay, what up with this? Right. And so they mm-hmm. were saying it's an amplification time and, and really is when you think about it, every single person has to work with, adhere to, universal laws. None of us, whether we're men or women, whatever our religions are, wherever we live, there are universal forces and laws that like vibration that all of us 
will need to relate with. We all do, whether we're conscious of it or not. And Mm -hmm. with this whole, you know, COVID thing happening, it is a universal situation that it doesn't matter if you're the top celebrity or athlete in the world, if you don't work, if you're a stay-at-home mom, what religion you are, if you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. It's universal. Mm -hmm. And in that, every single person is having their own unique experience. And when you think about it, what one person is being amplified with. So someone could be freaking out about money. They could be really worried and upset about money and, or having the reality where their, their avenue of how they get money has been stopped or paused. And so that is amplifying that fear that they have with money, that worry that they have Mm -hmm. with money. Or it could be someone else, right? That's at home and they're like, oh, I just want to find a partner. And that's, they're, they're, it's just something that is so on their mind. It's a pain point for them. They're lonely. They don't want to be lonely anymore. And then this happens and now they're at home with themselves. And that is amplifying that space of loneliness. Yes. Other under the spectrum, someone's really dissatisfied in their relationship, their marriage or living with the person. They can't see a way out. All of a sudden, this is being amplified because now they're on lockdown with the person, right? Yes. It could be health. I mean, whatever is amplifying for us in our own life experience, it's really a time for us to look at what is going on within me energetically on this particular subject. Mm -hmm. And to be able to know that we really do create our own reality and that when you master your energy around it, now, what I mean by that, your thoughts are energy, your emotions are energy, your words that you speak are energy. When we can realize, oh my gosh, this, I mean, this is what's being amplified. I'm going to just mm-hmm. look at this and have an awareness of this and not resist it, mm-hmm. have this awareness of it and kind of sit with it, be with it. Ugh, Christy, ugh. We live in the age of distraction, right? I'm supposed like, no, if I start feeling, yeah, if I start feeling yucky, like I, well, Tiger King now is like old news, isn't it? Like, okay, we did. We all avoided reality for three days, a month and a half ago. But there is this beauty in what you're saying, because I mean, seriously, how much more distraction there, there, you, we've run through all of our tools, all of our distraction tools are worn out. And now we're just sitting here with ourselves. And some of us are miserable with ourselves. Some of us are happy with ourselves. What do you think? This is like not a question I thought I was going to ask, but I'd love to just get your thought on it. How often, like percentage wise, how many people do you think sit with themselves and are truly uh, happy and feel fulfilled? And how many of us are on really uncomfortable being with ourselves? If you had to take a guess percentage wise based on everybody that you work with. Well, those that are into personal development and enjoy the process of self-discovery, that's a very different population than mass population. That's true. If we're looking at mass population, I'd say maybe 1% of the population. But if we're happy, well, I would say is is comfortable being with themselves, right? Perfect. And, And, you know, happiness is one of those things that it's like, what is happiness? What, right. And, and a lot of times we, assign happiness. If that's, if this happens, then I'll be happy. I'll be happy. When, if you are, if you change, then I'll be happy. If this happens, Mm -hmm. then I'll be happy. So our happiness is very conditional. So it's that percentage, that small percentage of the population that has that awareness that I can choose happiness no matter what I'm in the middle of lockdown and I can choose to be happy. And yeah, it really is a choice. I mean, I, my son just said to me, um, he's turning 11 this month. So he's my oldest. He said to me, he goes, I really miss my friends. Mm. And I said, honey, I get it. And you know what, when you see your friends the next time you are so going to appreciate being with them. And he goes, yeah. And they start going, I wonder when KTR, it's like the bouncy, you know, skateboard. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wonder when that's going to open up. And, and then he just moved into a different direction mm-hmm. because in that moment, mm-hmm. it would have been really easy to go. Yeah, I know. I miss getting my toes done or I miss getting, I miss waxing. I miss, you know, I miss seeing my friends. I miss this or I miss yeah. that. Takes you down a road that just doesn't feel good. But if you shift the conversation to, I know, you know what? I'm going to really appreciate watching you play soccer again. Yes. 
So maybe a better word that you use, you don't use the word happiness a lot. You use the word alignment, being yes. aligned. Yeah, I use that because the fact that all of us are energy, we're energy receivers and we're energy generators and we're energy transmitters when you really mm -hmm. think about who we are as human beings. And we get to tap into and choose almost like keys on a piano. There's a mm -hmm. whole spectrum of vibrations. And so there's the happiness, you know, button, if you will, the happiness, vibration, the joy, the appreciation, gratitude, love, all the other end, there's the anger, there's the fear. And mm -hmm. because we are energy and we have trillions of cells and all of those cells have receptor sites on them, we are always in the receiving mode of some type of energy. So if you go out in public, right? Yeah. And you maybe go to, um, I don't know, a Walmart and you got people freaking out over whatever, could be toilet paper, whatever, that yeah. energy, if you're not deliberate, could be seeping into you. So you walk out of Walmart feeling really agitated or fearful or sad or whatever the, the tone is of Walmart. Instead, attuning to your own energy that you choose, like just choosing and deciding, declaring, today I'm going to feel joy. And, I, and that partner that you have that's breathing you, that divine that's in you, Mm -hmm. That's the creator. That's the supplier of all the energy. So if you say, okay, today I'd like to be filled with joy and I'm going to speak words of joy. I'm going to have my thoughts be attuned to joy. I'm just going to feel joy. Douse me, let all of my receptor sites be filled up with the energy of joy. Mm -hmm. Then you're coming from a place, you're in the receptive mode of joy. And now you can generate joy and then you can also transmit joy. This is like, yeah, that's so true because when I first, and I'm wondering people, let us know in the chats because I know that when I first went out to, I actually did go to a Walmart, which is rare, but I did go to one. And then I went to a couple grocery stores at the beginning of COVID and I would come home and my whole nervous system would be rattled and I'd be on edge. I'm wondering if other people, I'm sure they did, but I'd love to see in the chat if you've had that experience, you're like, yeah, there are weird things that kind of goof up my own energy field. I kind of feel a little wonky when I get back. And, and to this, this other point that you make is so important. Mr. Rogers, let me simplify it. Let me put this on the lowest shelf. Mr. Rogers would say like, um, look for the people that are helping in the face of a tragedy, look for the people that are helping. So he's actually saying what you're saying on a different level, right? You're going to choose what you look for and you're going to find more of that. It's almost a version of confirmation bias. If I say, the world is chaos. When I look out into the world, my brain's going to filter. Show her the chaos. Show her the chaos. Don't show her the calm. That's not what she believes. Exactly. And that's how powerful that is in a time like this. If there was ever a time to watch our words and to think about how we're speaking to ourselves, this would be it. And that goes back to the alignment piece that you're talking about. This goes back to the very first thing we talked about, the amplification. Because mm -hmm. it was like I was saying, we're on a universal think of it like this right the world is experiencing a universal thing that each and every one of us will have our own unique experience during it that but will reveal that will reveal to us who we what's what's true all, in I mean, us yeah we're all having our experience of what are we attracting and what are we what are we mm -hmm. um sending out what are we in the receiving mode of what are we sending out and understand this is happening all day, every day, because this is based on vibration and universal law, whether there's COVID or not, whether all the doors open and everything is gone, we now still have a vibrational universe that we live in. And we are always yes. choosing our own experience. A lot of time it's unconscious. We might feel that, that um, perspective come up that we're not aware of. And then we see things that are, you know, not what we want in our reality. But if we're coming from a place of not being a victim to our reality and choose, like I'm deliberately creating my reality and, and become a student of universal laws and understand how to apply mm -hmm. them and how to be, you know, they're not just affecting us, we're affecting them and how to yeah. dance with that. You get to shift. Does it mean that your life is going to be, you know, rainbows and lollipops and unicorns every single day? God, I wish. I've been working with this stuff for 25 <laughs> years, right? You'd be a magician, Christy. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, I, I would, I would love it, but there's stuff that happens. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there, there's contrast that happens. The difference is, is that when it happens, I now can go, okay, am I going to be in receptive mode to this person being snarky at me and rude or to this thing that happened or to that? Am I going to let this be the thing that I receive energy from, or am I going to go back to source and choose today? I'm going to choose joy no matter what. I'm going to let joy mm-hmm. fill me up. I'm going to process the emotion that just came up, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, this, this contrasting situation angered me or it made me feel frustrated or it made me feel whatever. I felt this way. Process the emotions, which is the energy management of it. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then when you process it, you can then be in the receiving mode of what you want. Mm-hmm. And, and then as you're shifting away from what you don't want in contrast and you're shifting more on what you do want, you create more of what you do want. Mm -hmm. Well, this is kind of this idea that you talk about, about how to master your energy. We can't resist. We have to accept, move through it and choose what we focus on. That's what it sounds like you're saying here. It is what I'm saying because Mm -hmm. when we resist it, it it is true. It's what you resist persists because that's where your focus is. If you're going to fight someone or something, that's where your energy is. Instead of focusing, I don't want this anymore and screaming at it. It's like, you need to ask yourself, what do I want? And the thing is, most of us have gotten a PhD in lack and limitation and separation consciousness and suffering and, you know, struggle. We've been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Like It's caused enough contrast to, to say, you know what, this doesn't feel good. One thing that I know we've talked about, Lindsay, is that, you know, when you think about one of my favorite universal laws, because I talk about the seven essential laws, it's not law Mm -hmm. of attraction. Law of attraction is just giving you what you're sending out. It's law of sufficiency and abundance because you have a spectrum when you think about it. On one end of the spectrum is lack. On the other end of the spectrum is abundance. And right down the middle, that tipping point to get into abundance Mm -hmm. is satisfaction, And when you really look at your life on any given subject, doesn't matter if it's money, relationships, health, whatever it is, if you feel bad, you're Mm -hmm. in lack. And if you feel good or at least satisfied, you're on the tipping point, you're on the side of abundance. Because Mm -hmm. that alignment that we're talking about, that part of us that's breathing us, that's truly our life partner, because it is the one that like when it's done with us, it's our life that, you know, and we're left as a shell of a human being, right? Mm -hmm. The part that's Mm -hmm. beating our heart and moving all the organs to, you know, collaborate with each other to bring us back into alignment of well-being and pulsate our blood and all the life force stuff that's happening within us. That space, that, that is always in the energy of, satisfaction or better. It's in yes. abundance. It doesn't go with us to the conversation of lack or limitation. That's a mm-hmm. human conditioned part of us that thinks that there's no way to make any money. There's, yes. there's, there's all the good men are taken. Those and, are perfect. I was just going to ask you for examples because those are two great examples. Yeah. All the good men are taken. I can't get, you know, I won't get a job or I can't get a job. I saw this one career coach on LinkedIn. All she did was post and say, I hired somebody today off LinkedIn. And thousands and thousands and thousands of people were like, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like they needed somebody to inject a different view because we do kind of walk in a circle around some of our heavy thoughts or some of our, the, the, the idea of lack. Yes. And when Mm. it gets activated, what happens with us, and it's so funny, it's why it's becoming an energy master of our own experience is so important, Mm -hmm. is a lot of people will talk about, well, you got to, you got to, you know, focus on your mindset, right? It's like Mm -hmm. mindset's really important. And I'm like, yeah, it's part of the equation. If it was Mm -hmm. that simple, you could just say an affirmation and then, woo, everything would be changed in your life. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Been there, done that. It's, how to go we deeper. All, I'm going to push it in there. It doesn't work. No. And if you try to tell your mind something that it just doesn't believe, or that's not true for you, you're going to have more resistance than anything, but your mindset, your thoughts, they come from somewhere. Their, their first vibration before they set themselves up as a thought 
And that mm-hmm. vibration is active inside of us. And mm-hmm. what happens is the thought creates the emotion and then the emotion activates more of the thought. For example, God, I, I'm just never supported. And you feel, to, you know what? That's true. He never supported me. Oh yeah, that guy, he, that's true. And my mom never supported me either. Er, there's the, you know. That's, that's right. You know, and it goes on and on. And so the emotions activate the brain and, and the thoughts and the pictures and the memories and that part that goes, that's true. You know, and, mm-hmm. and then the beliefs continue. And this spiraling effect is like now we're generating inside of ourselves an energy that we are giving out. And we're going to see more evidence that you're right. You're not supportive. And it's that subtle. When do you think we start to notice when we're really in a tailspin? Because it, it probably happens to us all the time. When do you think we really start to notice it? Well, when do you pick up on it? Mm -hmm. When people feel anxious, right? I'm Mm -hmm. so anxious. Then we go to the doctor and the doctor gives us a pill for anxiety Mm -hmm. or Or the physical body lets you know, something's askew here. Your lower back is hurting. You have this belief and you're not supported. The body is so magnificent, amazing thing because it will outpicture what our emotions and our mindset have been to, in Mm -hmm. order to, not, not as a punishment to get our attention. So we pay attention so we can release that energy. One thing I absolutely love, and I've never, ever, ever heard anybody else say this before, but the council shares that anxiety on one end, depression on the other end, those are not emotions. Those are disease states that have Mm. been. Anxiety is a over amplification of an emotion that hasn't been expressed like fear, for example. So fear, mm, worry. Interesting. Mm-hmm. If you're constantly in a state of fear, it's going to show up as anxiety. If it doesn't get mm. processed as it's coming up. And same is true for depression. Depression is not an emotion. It's a disease state for which you could go get a pill for. But the underneath it is sadness. Someone mm. hasn't processed. They've suppressed their sadness. Yeah. And it leads to a depression. And the thing is, is that if you understand how to process emotions and release the underlying emotion that hasn't been expressed, the anxiety goes away. The depression Mm -hmm. goes away. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And that's, when we look globally, there are other cultures that go to the doctor and say, my heart hurts. And they're like, you must be sad. They, they actually make that tie. Western medicine doesn't make that tie as much. They're starting to, right? Starting to, yeah. But Eastern medicine and other places around the world, if you have a pain somewhere, they tie that to what's going on in your life. How are you doing emotionally? How are your relationships? You mentioned the lower back. Lower back ache can mean I don't feel supported, right? Absolutely. Shoulder, anytime my shoulders get tight, I think like, why do I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world on me? Why, what, what do I need to just, why do I have 10 rocks in my backpack? What rocks do I need to take out of my backpack? You know, so that makes a lot of sense. That really does. So what about this piece uh, about choice right now? We've kind of been talking about this the whole time. You have a choice of kind of how you want to process and think about whatever scenario you're in. In the extreme, which is kind of dark to bring up would be like any world war two Nazi Germany book that you read. Victor Frankl would be an example of this where he's in the worst circumstance and he talks about, I still have choice. Yes. How, what do you, what do you think about this concept right now? Where do you think we're missing it? Well, we always, that's one of the things that, you know, it cannot, again, when you think about the universe and how it was created and all that we know and spiritual connection and all that, we've all been given free will. We, we mm-hmm. don't live in an assertion-based universe. We live in an attraction-based universe. And so even from the help from the divine, we have a team of, you know, angels and guides and, you know, just like a whole team on the other side waiting to help us, support us, bring us energy, all that kind of stuff. But it cannot be imposed on us. We have to be the one that asks and mm-hmm. then receives. But in that, we have our own free will. 
We've been given that, each mm-hmm. one of us. It's not like someone to have, some of us lucky ones have it and some of the unlucky ones don't. We all do. And to yep. understand the basis of that, that we have a choice in what we, where we put our focus on what we don't want or what we do want. We have a choice if we're going to process our emotions or not. We have a choice as to what thought we're going to think. We have a choice as to what word we're going to use. Mm-hmm. We have a choice in, to focus on the abundance of our lives and what's good and right, or we have a choice and focus on what's right and, or wrong or bad. Yes. Just even in this containment, again, if you look at this universal thing and look at each individual, it's like, how are you going to choose to process this time? Is this going to be one of the greatest spiritual expansion time for you and greatest per- personal development time for you? Or are you going to spiral down into fear and worry and lack and all of that? It's Mm -hmm. our choice. Mm -hmm. All of it's our choice. And it really does. I mean, when you think about it, it's like the example I gave of my son, Alex, it all starts with words, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. You know, it does. It does. I mean, if you, in the beginning, there was the word. When you think about it, words are the creative process. They start Mm -hmm. the creation process. Thoughts are a series of words. Thoughts thought Mm -hmm. over and over again, create beliefs, beliefs, create our reality, everything, all creation and the whole energetic system starts with words. So just that conversation with Alex, you know, he could have went, I I really miss my friends. Like, I get it. But Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, are you not so going to appreciate when you get to get together with them? (gasps) Yeah. I wonder if this place is open yet. I wonder when they're going to open this and "Mm, my birthday is, you know, do you think I'm going to, and it gets you in a different place. Yeah. There's almost this opportunity. It sounds like to energetically shepherd the people around you too. Not I mean, there's a fine line between manipulating people and not letting them have their feelings, but a moment you can tell, especially with a kid when they say something and they, there's a tipping point, like, uh uh-oh, we're either going into meltdown mode or we're going to go into, like, connection mode. Let's see which way this goes. We do have power as parents to be able to help shepherd kids energetically, too, so that they have hope right now. Yes, and also parent parent the inner us, too. Yes. Don't we all need that, truly? (laughs) Parenting ourselves. Yep, that's so true. I'm so curious... Sam, Sam, I know you've been talking to people in the chat. Are there a few questions, Christy? Would you be up for taking a little break and a few questions? Okay, great. Yeah, there's some great questions that are aligning with a lot of what we're talking about. Jamie was saying, how do you keep this positivity at the forefront all day long? So, you know, the morning or when you're starting to make that decision, it might be easier. But when things start to get busy, the things just get in the way. So how do you, how do you continue to get back when you decide, I want to be joyful? How do you? I love that question. At the forefront. Love that question. So think about your physical body from a biological perspective. Do you go to the bathroom once a day? Probably not. Do you, you should see a doctor. If that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of this interview and go directly. You are so funny. Do you, do you uh, take a drink once a day? Do you eat a meal once a day? And you, you need to think about how do you fuel your body? If you get thirsty, mm. you're going to get thirsty all day. You're going to give yourself sips, hopefully, of something mm-hmm. all throughout the day. You're going to fuel your body all throughout the day. It's an energetic, spiritual fueling, if you will. I always mm-hmm. recommend that when you start in the morning, when you first realize that you are awake, what most people do, when you think about that spectrum of am I in lack yeah. or am I in abundance, most people wake up and go, oh, I didn't sleep enough. Oh, I didn't get enough yep. hours. Oh, I don't have enough time. Look at our I got to get on Zoom to get in the meet. They get into the lack mode. It starts right there. Yep. So as you're waking up, literally fill yourself up with how do we want to feel today? What is the perspective I want? If, if you have a divine self, which you do, mm-hmm. that is the provider and supporter and source of all energy, and it is, mm-hmm. if you get to say, today, I just want to feel uh, taken. It's like here, today I just want to feel abundant. I want to feel joyful. And you fill yourself up. Just imagine being doused in a waterfall of light with all of your receptor sites being filled up. And then maybe mid-morning, as you're taking a sip of water or you're about to have your, a meal or a snack or something like that, 
it doesn't take long. You just sit before you do something else, before the next segment of your day, and just allow yourself to reconnect with that feeling of joy and fill yourself up and do that yeah. all day, every day. Here's the thing though. I don't want to have it be a Pollyanna, just feel joy and everything will be so great. Stuff happens, right? Yes. Husband can yes. say something that's like, dude, ow, you know, yeah. or the kid can do something that's obnoxious or you get a piece of you know, news. Um, something, someone crosses a boundary. I had a client who I did not give my cell phone to that texted me at eight o'clock on a Friday night, commanding me to get on Zoom with her. And I was like, no. And, and I, I was like, oh, and how did Ugh. you get my cell phone? I yeah. love, 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 support, adore my clients. Friday nights are my night to get a massage. I get a, I have a woman that comes to my house. It's my thing. I've been doing it for years. Even my kids, my husband know mom's going to go get a massage. I go into my bedroom, into my bathroom, and I get this massage. That's me time. Yes. I was like, no, you know, and it it felt almost intrusive to be texting me. And so that was a feeling of like, okay, this is what's happening. What are my choices? Do I want to get on a Zoom? No, I don't. I'm going to go get my massage. So what could I do? What are the choices and options that I have? I'm going to call my assistant, Beth, called her, told her, this is what's got to be said and done and that sort of thing. And she handled it beautifully. And then I was able to go with my massage. But before I went into massage, I was like, huh, I didn't feel good. That, was, that kind of, that was not even just a mild irritation annoyance. That was like a, a true boundary that was crossed because it wasn't like I said, Hey, I have celebrities that I work with. They're the only ones that have my cell phone. And when they need an energetic boost, I'm there for them. But yeah, it's, it's a agreed contracted relationship. Yes. This was yes. not agreed or, you know, anything like that. So it felt yeah. very intrusive. So I, that I would dealt, feel. Yeah. So intrusive. Yeah, it was. So I, I processed my, my emotions of anger, irritation, really let mm-hmm. it go, came back into joy. And I was like, all right, massage time, let's go. So it doesn't mean that because I work with my energy and I connect with my alignment that things won't come up. That's not realistic. That's right. You just don't sit in it. No. That's it. Yeah. We talk about how emotions are like ocean waves. And really, they they can neurologically go through your body in 90 seconds. Yes. If you are able to acknowledge and go, wow, I'm really pissed. That felt like really invasive. Ugh. Okay. All right. I see. Okay. And wiggle out of it. You yes. know, versus fighting those waves and like, what, what, what did you say earlier today? Resisting. Yeah. What you resist persists. So I love that you're saying that because there is this movement in the personal growth world, and I'm sure you've seen it too, where, where it is almost spiritual bypassing or emotional bypassing where people are saying, you know, see, this is an opportunity. See, this is the, like pushing you to try to force an experience that may not be true for you in the moment. So I love this blend of be true to yourself work through it, accept what this feels like. So you that be real and honest. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, when you look at what emotions are, mm-hmm. their, their communication to us from us, they're like, that's right. If, if I'm sitting in here and all of a sudden I hear the fire alarm go off in my kitchen, I'm not going to go, Oh, cool. Fire alarm. <laughs> I, I'm going to go, I, excuse me for a moment. My fire alarm is going off, right? I got to go in there and check it out. That on Friday night, that was a signal to me that didn't feel good. And so I looked at what are my choices Mm -hmm. and options, Mm -hmm. right? And what do I need to do so that this is a boundary and that this doesn't get crossed again, right? Yes. I love that. That's just one example. Can I give a fun example of this? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, most people don't know this about me, but I am a total rocker chick. Like I love eighties rock and eighties rock bands. And, and my husband, and I have been seeing like, you know, sticks and, and Joan Jett and, you know, going. Oh, different- Joan Jett. So much fun. So when I heard that Pat Benatar was coming to town, I was like literally waiting 
to get my tickets, right? And I got four front row tickets for my husband and I and my kids because my kids, unfortunately, or fortunately, however you'll look at it, have heard Pat Benatar since they were babies. <laughs> so they know all of her songs. And so they wanted to go. So I'm like, okay, so mm-hmm. got four front row tickets, right? And we're, and as we're driving to the concert, I said to my husband and my kids, I'm like, I want to get Neil Geraldo, Spider, her lead guitarist and husband, his guitar pick. So that was all I said. That was my intention, right? So I'm in the front row and Neil Geraldo, who when, when I was like 12 years old, went to my very first concert, he came out on stage. I was like, he don't look like daddy do. I mean, he was just like, whoa, he was just a hot <laughs> festive of a man. So he is like playing the guitar right at me, looking at me. I'm having this moment going, oh my God, this is awesome. Totally ripping on his guitar, takes the guitar pick, throws it at me. And because there was like a barrier, it fell yeah. short, right? So I couldn't get it. So he oh. sees that I couldn't get it. So he goes to throw me the guitar pick again. And my husband being the nice guy that he is, he decides he's going to help out. And in doing so, punches me in the eye in the process of going to get the guitar pick. And then as I'm like, oh my God, God you know, I, I couldn't reach <laughs> for it because I'm like, have one eye. He then takes the guitar pick and he's handing it to a woman next to me who we're not with. We don't know from Adam. And I'm, so I'm like, oh my God, that was my guitar pick. I mean, it's a guitar pick, right? I mean, let's but, get but it's, you know, yeah. But, right. I, I get that it's a guitar pick. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is my husband who just punched me in the eye for my guitar pick that Neil Geraldo gave to me, gave it to somebody else. So I don't know if I was more mad that he was, that he punched me in the eye or gave away my guitar pick. So <laughs> here I am at this concert and I'm like, okay, I have a choice. I could be really pissed off at him, not look at him or speak to him the rest of the night because I'm totally justified in being angry right now. Or I could just, I realize that obviously he didn't intentionally try to hit me. He was doing, I don't know what the guitar giving him that away. I'll have to talk to him about that later. We'll have to deal with that <laughs> later. But I was like, I need to process my emotions. I was angry. And fortunately, I was at a concert where they were like ripping chords. So I could like feel the pulsation of the air yeah. yeah. like, mm, with the bass and all that. And so I let it go. Within 90 seconds, that all that emotion left, that anger emotion left my body and went, okay, I just want to stay in this joy. Hit me with your best shot came on after that. Yes! It was like so funny because he, you know, hit me and I'm singing it with my kids and they know yeah. all the words. And so it was a moment. I had a choice in that moment to ruin mm-hmm. the night because of what happened or to let it go to, I didn't yeah. just suppress it or I didn't like ignore it. I full on felt it and I yeah. let it go. And I'm like, okay, I'm releasing it. I forgive him. I do have questions. I want answers to what that was about, but, but we'll get to that later. I'm going to enjoy myself. And I did. Yes. That's so, like a practical, real example of how stuff happens, oh, right? And that's a was, perfect example. We're all getting punched in the face right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I know some of my favorite leaders are on this, some of my favorite uh, leaders in Indianapolis. And I've watched them do exactly what you're saying, being like, hey, we all just got punched in the face. Let's get our therapist on a Zoom call and talk about what the hell we're supposed to do. And from every angle, from emotional health to spiritual alignment to just your biology, we are finding over and over again that it's what you're saying, that we have to experience our emotion if we want to move through it. Yes. And there's something really potent, a powerful person. It sounds like part of what you're saying is that a powerful person allows themselves those experiences so that they can move through it. You got to enjoy the rest of your night. How many times... I'm just thinking even like in the last week when I've been like, and like kept my little pricklers out <laughs> because you know what that is when we're still prickly and shitty after, you know, an hour of talking in a circle, I think it's that we're not allowing ourselves to actually feel it. So we want somebody else to validate that we feel like shit yeah. instead of just being like, yeah, I feel like shit. That's just me talking to me. Like you were saying, emotion is communication to us from us. Yeah. And, the, and my dog wants to hack up something right now. So I really <laughs> want to be a part of this. And I know, you, that, all, I know you all are dying to know. I did get my guitar pick. So it did you did end up getting it? I did. How my, did you get one at the my end? Son, my son, Maxim, 
I said, come here. And he crawled over the barrier. He got me the initial one and he gave it to me. So I got you it. You know, it's like, that's the sweetest thing. Do you still have it? Oh, of course. You're like, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Would you die? I'm like, yeah, it's right here. I have yeah, it right here on my in, desk. <laughs> I keep it in a drawer next to me. Channel. I love that. I think that's so, that's such a good example though, where you did actually get what you wanted in the end too. Yeah. I love that. And I, I know we could all find a way to, to relate to that right now in a major way. Are there any other questions, Samantha, that people are asking? Because Christy's, I want to be mindful of her time yeah. and everybody's time on here, but what's one more question? Yeah, we have two really great other questions okay. if we're able to get to both. So Amber asked, and I think this will be helpful for everyone, what are your best practices in being there for friends and family and helping them when they're panicked and anxious without absorbing those vibes and then affecting mm. our alignment and our energy? Love oh. that question. Okay. Here is the secret sauce for all this. When you are, again, thinking of everything just as energy, when you are aligned with energy and you are filling yourself up, this is why a lot of people are like, well, I'm an empath. I can't be around a lot of people. I get affected. What they don't understand is that they're in receptive mode of other people's anxiety and fear and they're being receptive to it because they haven't filled themselves up and continue to feel that constant flow and that using that, have that practice of, okay, today I'm connecting with joy. I'm going to be around my, my cousins or my friends or whoever it is. And they kind of do negativity. So I need to be with them. So I'm just going to be in this constant flow of when you let your heart light come out and literally let energy flow out of your heart and stay in the vibration of love, not, not like, oh, if you do this for me, not conditional love, but just the pure energy of love. And you're exuding that out. What the council likes to say is this is our transmutation station, that if you are in this high vibration of love, any energy that comes in your presence, it gets transmuted. So you now are the influencer instead of being influenced by it. You actually uplift other people. And if they don't get uplifted, you're going to be so in such a state of, of like vi radiant vibrational light that they're going to go in the other room because you're bright, you're shining too bright. I love what Lisa, Lisa Nichols would say. She would say um, that if uh, you don't like how, sh how bright I'm shining my light, go get some sunglasses because I'm not dimming it. Boom. Right. So that's, that's how you so deal. Good. That's how you deal with negativity is, is first energy. And, you know, and there might be times where you have to just realize that this friend that I have is so negative. I don't like being around her mm -hmm. or I had to do that with a, an extension of my family of a, a kind of a tree of, of cousins where I just would notice, I just, they're, they're just not nice, kind people. I just don't mm -hmm. want to be around them. So why mm -hmm. am I going to spend Christmas with them? Why would I want to spend Christmas when I don't want to see them the rest of the time? and created a, a boundary and, and shifted everything to have it be my family and my mom and my dad and, and be around those that I really love and care about. And were they kind of like, what's up? What, you know, eh, what they do with that information is, is theirs to do with it. Mm -hmm. Cause I can't, mm -hmm. I can't ask them to change, nor will they, will they? So in order to take care of myself and my family and to be in a place where I feel good, Yep. My life. That's right. That's, that goes back to the idea that we really do have choice and the responsibility to take care of ourselves and our thought life and the environment that we allow ourselves to be in. That's, I think the thing that's so hard about what you talk about, Christy, is underneath it all, it's like, you are responsible for your life. And it's empowering. And then there's moments where you're like, there's no one to blame. It's exactly. just me now. Yeah. What was the other question, Sam, as we're wrapping up? Yeah. The last question was, how do you best process the emotions and not suppress the emotions toward disease? Love it. So, yeah. yeah so, so when I, I, we didn't go through this today, but one of the things that you have to understand is that your emotional body, which is your lower part of your body. So like your belly button around your gut, you know, whenever you feel like a, something happens, you get this gut instinct or, and usually people are just like, oh, they want to like 
constrict around it. Like, oh my God, like mm-hmm. something, it, you're sideswiped by something or what I like to call bushwhacked, right? You get like this mm-hmm. news and you just kind of collapse around it. Instead, be with it. And the emotions will start in your gut area, but they will go into every single cell because that's, you're not a compartmentalized thing. You're an intricate machine. But if you take your focus and your attention into your belly, there's a pulsation there. Like you have a heartbeat. Like if you were to take your hand and feel the pulse of your neck or your wrist, there is a, an energy pulsation in your belly. And you don't have to name the emotion. You don't have to describe it. You don't have to justify it. You could just go into your belly. Like if I'm, I'm at the concert, this is out, right? Yeah. And I knew I was angry. So that, you know, but, but sometimes you don't know, am I frustrated? Am I irritated? Am I fearful? You don't have to do any of that. You could just go into your emotion and feel the pulsation and literally let your whole body rock with the feeling and that pulsation. And some people can't feel it because they're just not aware and not subtle and because they haven't practiced it or they've closed mm-hmm. off their emotions for so long. But as you just give your body permission to feel the, the pulsation in your belly, you'll get more skillful at doing it. Everybody can. It's just the more practice you do. But it takes about 90 seconds to be present with that energy and just imagine it releasing. And then once again, bringing in the energy to fill up that space with the energy that you do want. What's important though, is that you deactivate the mind while you're doing this, because as they both kind of spiral around each other, as you're in your belly and you're like, well, I am justified. This is a, now you've got your mind hooked in again and it amplifies each other. So you want to be able Mm -hmm. to isolate. That's why when people try to isolate the thoughts with emotions, Thinking a negative thought, obviously having an affirmation or a mantra is better than thinking a negative thought, but that's why it doesn't go further than that. Most people are like, I'm abundant, right? And they don't get into like, I'm abundant and feel the energy and let the emotions get kicked in with it so that you're actually from a just full body experience, I am abundant. You know, that's what then shifts the emotions. You can't shift everything just from the head space or from the mind space. You have to get the emotions involved with it. Yeah. It's not like, it, you know, with, I, we kind of joked earlier about being a magician, but even in like movies where there's um, magic and you have a wand, you say the thing, but they're like, you got to feel it in your guts to activate it. And I know I'm not trying to Harry Potter this whole thing, <laughs> but just that idea that you could, you know, that it's not enough to just say the affirmation, but to feel it and to know okay, it's, it's here. Let me be present with it. The 90 seconds. Let me really make sure I'm acknowledging it. Yes. That's so huge. That's such good advice. I actually put my hand on my stomach as you were talking. I was thinking about what have I felt even today? Like even just doing these check-ins through the day, like you've said, you don't take a sip of water in the morning and then you're hydrated all day, but how do I continue to check in with myself? It, and it also sounds like you're saying this is a practice that you're not like going to nail it out the gate, but we really have to get used to this. Is that what you're saying? I'm uh, totally saying that. It's not like, yeah. you know, for those of you that graduated from high school, you now have a high school diploma or graduated from college. You have a high school, you go, you do it once you get the degree it's done. It's yours forevermore. Energy is not like that. We're a living, breathing thing, entity, yeah. light. And life is happening. We're in a world where there's multiple energies happening all at the same time. I mean, you know, just thinking of the people that you live with, if one's in a mood and has a different type of energy, that energy affects everybody in the house. Isn't Um, that so true? It is. I mean, and that's why we have conversations with our boys. It's like, be mindful of the energy you bring to our space because everybody Mm -hmm. has an effect and the energy that we're you know, cultivating here that we're um, having collaborate uh, in the collaborative effort, but really coming to a place of synergy is peace and harmony and Mm -hmm. there's no place for drama. So if you Mm -hmm. need to do drama, if you need to get angry or would you go in your room, have fun up there in your room, do your anger stuff, process it. And when you're ready to come back into peace and harmony, and that goes for me too. If I'm like, totally, I'm, I'm taking a time out. I'm going to go take a bath so I can come back to myself. Totally. Well, we talk about that even on like a corporate side. We talk about that that one person on the team that 
everyone is bending around because they're in moods or they're not really willing to do their work or they're difficult to work with. That one person takes down an awesome team of high achievers because they're coming around kind of spewing it everywhere. So that idea of just, even I would think as we, as people do go back to work or do go back into uh, this next phase of life as we're de quarantining a little bit, just being mindful of, you know, the way I walk into the office, the way I walk into my next job interview, the way I walk into with my family, I am really creating waves for other people too. And that's pretty powerful. And it's, it's oddly reassuring to know that we're that connected, you know? Absolutely. I love, you, you have so much good stuff. And I think this law of abundance that you talk about, or just this being in an abundant place. One thing we talked about last time is you know, you want people to be able to grow and change and be able to do this for themselves. So one thing that Christy did was she created a free course, watchyourwords.com. Go to watchyourwords.com. It's a 30 day video course. You get to see your face more. It's not just like an audio or like a printout. They, then you have to write on like, go spend some time with Christy and you'll see within 30 days how much your language is creating your reality around you. I think it's so cool that you created this to give away. Yeah. I, I mean, Lindsay, I had people all the time saying to me, oh my God, like, where do I start? And I'd say, we'll start mm-hmm. with your words. And they were like, what, what words? So what I did is I put a list of 30 words and phrases together that are bringing down our... Um, our energy that are stuck in lack that most of us say we don't even realize and why it's affecting you in the way it is and then what to change it to. And so it's just a quick, you know, it's, it's like one of the examples like, Hey, Oh, I miss, well, instead of saying, I miss this, you can go, "I, I miss watching my kids play soccer. It's like, Oh, I appreciate watching my kids play soccer. And when they go back to playing soccer, I'm going to appreciate it more than I ever have. Yeah. Difference. Oh my God, I miss going out to a date night with my husband and going to a nice restaurant, right? Well, oh my gosh, when those restaurants open and I get to put on a nice outfit and have an actual date night with my husband, oh my God, I'm going to appreciate that so much better than I ever have, right? It's a very different vibe. Yes. So there are 30 words and phrases. Um, as Lindsay, Lindsay said, it's a... Um, video program. So if you find me annoying, don't go sign up for it. Because you no, got everybody, <laughs> you got me for 30 videos. They're short and sweet. They're sometimes mm-hmm. like two minutes, but it's just, it tells you what you need to know the word, the phrase, what it's doing to you energetically, what to switch it to instead. And I even interact with you in the video, like say this to yourself so that you can say it and feel for yourself how it affects you. And then mm-hmm. say this instead and see how that affects you so that you're you're able to see it for yourself. And, and that's really what's most important because you're the, ultimately the energy master of your own life and body and experience. I love that. I love that. I so appreciate this time with you. It was a huge energy boost for me. And I'm sure for all those uh, that are watching live that this really is the opportunity to shift and think differently. And then if you're like, hey, I want to do something. I need a new like morning routine. Watchyourwords.com start there. I highly encourage you to see uh, what that experience is like. Christy, thank you so much. Your time is the one thing none of us can make more of. And you gave us an hour of it today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I so appreciate what you're doing. And uh, you know, the song from REM, I don't know why it keeps popping in my head, but it's the end of the world as we know it. And I Mm -hmm. feel fine. It's a choice. (laughs) <laughs> I love that. I love that. Everybody go listen to your rock music. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank everybody so for much. being here. You know where to find me, uh, Christy, go to watchyourwords.com. You can find her. If you have questions or anything after, you can always shoot me an email too, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you friends for coming to the porch to spend an hour with us. It's so good to see you all here. Thank you, Christy. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.